now my older son, I never forget, I, I gave he had a curfew, right? And so, you know, he had this curfew, man. I'm like, man, to be your age, man, that's 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 like I'm kind of like giving you like some real leeway here, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, man, he just one day he was just like he calls me at the time of his curfew. So I'm like, you're supposed to be in the house. Hey, Dad, I'm calling you because, you know what? I just think it's a little unfair, man, that, you know what I'm saying, I have to be in at this time. Like, I mean, it's weird. I said, hey, you know what's weird? Is you not that you're not home. And you know what's going to be even more weird? Is when you get here, <laughs> it's going to get even weirder. Because <laughs> I don't know who you think you're talking to, but I don't play that. You better figure out how to get home. As a matter of fact, if you don't get home fast enough, you're not even going to live here anymore. It's going to be weird. <laughs> What's doing, everybody? Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. I'm Alec Lace. And before I hit you with today's interview, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the link in the description so you can listen to all of the interviews I've done with so many tremendous dads, including Dana White, Deion Sanders, Tony Hawk, and so many others. Now let's get going with today's interview. Joining me now, First Class Father, Sean Garrett, the pen. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Hey, what's happening? What's happening, brother? How you doing? Doing well. Let's start it right here. How many kids do you have? How old are they? Man, I got two. I got two. I got two boys, man. My oldest son is 920 and son is six. Very cool. What kind of sports or activities are they into? Man, uh, actually, my first son was amazing at basketball and now he's a producer <laughs> uh and then my my youngest son he's in right now he's not really going crazy in sports yet um he's more I'm in music yeah he's see <laughs> <laughs> cruzy bear is in music man he says um but he's in the youtube he's into music he really really is into music which is funny to me <laughs> 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 yeah, no surprise there. And on that, if you could, Sean, please just take a second to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay, man. My name is Sean Garrett Depend, man. I am singer songwriter, super producer. Uh, let's see, man. I got 52 number one records. I got 18 Hot 100 number one records. My first 10 singles were Hot 100 number ones. And we could probably run down, uh, let's see, you might know some songs like Usher's Yeah or Sierra's Goodies or records like beyonce's check up on it ring the alarm get me bodied upgrade you uh dusty child soldier lose my breath chris brown's run it give me that ain't no way wall to wall fergie's london bridge pussycat dolls buttons <laughs> enrique iglesias uh demilo uh man i mean the list goes on and mary j blige no more crying uh, Britney Spears, uh, Toy Soldier. I mean, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of things, man. A lot, a lot, a lot of little things, little buzzwords there, you know? Yeah, the, the hits are obviously, they keep coming and coming. You've had an incredible career here so far. I know it's really uh, heating up for you, too, as well. But take me back to the beginning of your fatherhood journey here then, Sean. About how old were you then when you first became a dad? And how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Man, having a kid for the first time. Because, you know, so I grew up in Europe. Uh, so I first record deal, I was like 14, had my, my, my kid, man, really young. And I didn't, I wasn't ready. I was not ready. And I, I and, and growing up in Europe, um, my whole life was kind of off the grid, uh, because everything that I was learning, I didn't know anybody around me. Uh, I didn't know anyone around me hardly, you know what I mean? They were all new. Everything around me was really new. It wasn't nothing familiar, you know. So I moved to Europe when I was like five, six years old. Um, my first kid, I just was not prepared uh, mentally. Um, and I thought that I was going to fail. Uh, but one thing I did once, you know, once we had my first kid, it was so much going on, being an artist, living in Europe, um, you know, not really being stable as I wanted to be as far as like I didn't want to have a kid out of wedlock. That was that was totally against everything that I thought was going to work out with having children. <laughs> didn't work out. So me, you know, me and my first son's mom broke up when he was. Man, like seven months, man. And then 
honestly, the same thing happened with my second son, too. And I think it's that's what happens when you're young, right? It's like, if you don't really understand, like, having children and, and the whole life of family, right, and, and understanding how that sort of works in your life, it um, or it's supposed to work, I'm sorry. When you don't understand how it's supposed to work and you're kind of doing it out of order, oh, man, it's it's uh, because then, you know, your girl is saying your girl is saying that she wants to go this way and you're knowing that you want to go that way. And there's a child here in the middle. Right. And it's like. So now you're you, you know, you're in two different households. There's two different decision making scenarios is happening. She's been influenced by her parents. You're being influenced by your parents. Um, and then the message is like, Hey, I don't know what y'all going to do, but you're going to figure that you better figure this out because now there's a child here that you got to figure out. And so you're making decisions that you really don't want to make. Um, and then before you know it, you know, I, I tend to think a lot of young kids or young parents end up regretting it. Right. And by the time you, at least until the time you figure it out, once you start to figure it out, you're like, Oh, you know, it wasn't really so bad. Right. And so that's kind of how my life has been. Um, and, you know, my kids having such a wide gap, even the second cat was like, I mean, he's here. So I, I really don't want to uh, <laughs> say crazy, but I mean, I just wasn't ready. It's not wasn't in the plan. Right. And so um, I don't know, man, it's been a, it's been a but it's been an amazing ride. Uh, I'm so fortunate and thankful I got boys. Because if I had girls, <laughs> I would be in trouble. <laughs> I would be in trouble because girls are so much more complicated, in my opinion. They're just, and and they have a, they, boy, they have a way of ringing their dads around their finger. And, uh, you know, I know I would be a sucker. I would just be a complete sucker for my daughter. Um, so I'm telling you, man, I'm thankful. Because at least with the boys, you can just be like, Hey, put your shoes up, clean your room, da, 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 get it, hey, ah. and I don't have to worry about going through an emotional moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of them telling me like, Daddy, hold on. No, I don't have a daughter. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Why do you see a daughter? Because well, he, he was asking me what, you know, I was speaking on the reference of having boys versus girls. Yeah, and Sean, you're right on there because I, I I got three boys I myself. I yeah. got three. I got three boys myself. Then we got the girl on the fourth try. So uh, it's definitely a different dynamic, and it's definitely shaking things up in my house. But but to your point there, what you're saying, one of the things I talk about on my show a lot is the fatherless crisis that we do have going on in our country. We got so many kids growing up without a father or father figure in their life, and one of those specific reasons is for the amount of kids being born out of wedlock. Another side of that coin is the multi-million dollar family court industry that has just wreaked oh havoc God. on dads all across this country. So oh uh, we God. and it's great to see you're right there with your son there you're involved in your kids lives what would you consider sean to be the top values that you hope to instill in your boys growing up um look you just say some of the most man you you've you've, you've nailed it i mean first of all i'm a hands-on father you know what i'm saying and anybody that knows me know that um i think it's so important man to to instill in your kids the same thing that i feel like my parents did to me they they instilled a, a great deal of confidence a great deal of confidence um and giving them the road right it's like I assumed that my first son understood everything that I was doing, but he really didn't because he was growing up in the house, but he didn't know when I was on the road and when I was, you know, he knew I was in the studio with Beyonce one day or, or, or Desi Chow or Chris Brown, or, you know, he got a chance to meet them, but at the same time, he didn't understand how I was connecting the dots. And connecting the dots are so important in, in meaning how do you take this song, create this song, create this relationship with the artist, understand what to give the artist, understand what you need to what the artist needs to give you and then understand how that business of that works. Right. And how do you deal with these different people? That are all different personalities. Right. Um and so on and deal with lawyers and all this, you know, all the so on and so forth. They never got that. He, he never got that experience. So now he's made, he's doing great now, but there was a sense in time where he wasn't really listening to what I was trying to tell him because it was like, 
he thought this new generation, uh, the way that they were doing it is the way that you do it, right? And it's like, see, I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. I told you that. Oh, my God, you told me this. Duh. <laughs> and so I think the most important thing to get back to your question is really taking the time to do point by point by point with your children. You have to you have to give them all of it. You got to give them all of it. And you got to take the time and spend with them. It's just like you're growing up with your homeboys. You know, it's like my, me and my kids are really, really close. And they're like replicas of me. But it's like, you know, you got to take the time with your kids. No matter what you're doing. And I think sometimes people are afraid to take their children and in, and, and involve their children in their work. Right? I, I sort of involve my kids with my work. Right? And, uh, of course, that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? To be able to do that. Um, but what I don't do is try to force them in, in boxes either. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, I try my best to keep music away from both of these kids and <laughs> they want to do it even more. So it's like, um, man, and, and you know what? Understanding that they're all different. You got to understand that each and every one of your children are completely different. I think sometimes people try to have this blanket uh, of, a, of opinion or a blanket of an understanding. Man, your, your one of your kids are completely different than the other one. And even though they're both a boys, they just, you know, my, my two sons are completely opposite. One is a cancer. The other one is a Taurus. The, the baby is a Taurus. And when I tell you he knows exactly what he's trying to do, he knows where he's trying to go. He be trying to program me. <laughs> now my other one, my other one is so much more laid back. Um, he's passive aggressive. This one here, he is super aggressive. And uh, you, you know, you, 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 I, I knew that my, my youngest was a Taurus from the beginning. So I, I had already prepared that he was going to be a bit strong minded, right? He was going to, he has a boy, his little personality. Sometimes I have to say, hey, who are you talking to? I'm your daddy. You, you better watch how you're talking to me because it, it's it's just in his mind is moving so fast. You know, Taurus are just driven. They're driven. They know what they want. They're they, they're they're focused and uh, they could be a bit hard headed. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he's a sweetheart, too. He's 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 really a, a, a charming kid. Very bright. Uh, very uh, thought provoking. Provoking. And I have bright skin. Oh, and you got great skin. You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what, Sean, I couldn't agree with you more. My four kids couldn't be more different. And one of the things I have to do differently with each one of them is discipline them differently. They all respond to different forms of discipline. So what type of disciplinary are you as a dad? And is it, it has it been different from uh, your, your older son to your younger one now? And is it all a different yeah. style than the discipline you grew up with? Oh, man. Yeah, that's a great question. Yep. Yep. Uh my mother didn't play the radio, man. My mom would throw a pot, a pen. A, I, she don't care. She didn't care what it was. Like, she didn't have time to prepare you for the whipping. She was just on you. You know what I mean? And uh, I sort of appreciated that. As crazy as that may sound, because uh, I was never put in a position uh, to uh, try my mom. Oh, two, two minutes. I'll be off this interview in one second. Uh, I was, um, I was always, I never even tried my mom a little bit. I didn't even play my mom. I, I didn't play with her at all. It was just like, she told me to do something. I, Cause I figured in my mind, it's like, you know what? It's going to take me more time and I'm going to risk myself of being on punishment by doing what she don't want me to do versus just doing what the hell she wants me to do. <laughs> I just thought that made logical sense. So, and so, uh, and so the answer to the question, um, so the difference between now my older son, now when he got about, he got in, in his teens, I had to kind of go crazy on him a couple of times because he was, he was saying things to me. I was like, Hey, cause I, so I remember, I never remember, I never forget. I, I gave, he had a curfew. Right. And so, you know, he had this curfew, man. I'm like, man, to be your age, man, that's, that's, that's like, I'm kind of like giving you like some real leeway here. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, man, he just one day he was just like he calls me at the time of uh his curfew. So I'm like, you're supposed to be in the house. Hey dad, I'm calling you because you know what? I just think it's a little unfair, man, that you know what I'm saying, I have to be in at this time. Like, I mean it's weird. I said, Hey, you know what's weird? 
is you're not that you're not home. And you know what's going to be even more weird is when you get here, <laughs> it's going to get even weirder because <laughs> you because I don't know who you think you're talking to, but I don't play that. You better figure out how to get home. As a matter of fact, if you don't get home fast enough, you're not even going to live here anymore. It's going to be weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that part, um, you know, that part. So that was that was that phase. This phase, oh my God, this one is a little bit more emotional, and he tries to think. He's basically programming me to think how he wants me to think, which is bizarre. Daddy, talking about me? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you, buddy. So, and don't forget that I'm fast. Don't forget that you're fast. You are fast. You definitely are fast. Uh, and so, you know, the hard part is um, I, I'm going to have to take a different approach with this one because he's the type of kid. Oh, man, he's he's very vocal. He says things that you just like, please don't say that. Because I don't want to have to go crazy on you. Please don't do that. <laughs> and I just know it's coming. He's, he just turned six. So I know, man, I am enjoying this. I am really enjoying where I'm at with him. And I, that, that just causes me to have to spend way more time with him. Because you just don't want them to get out of hand and misunderstand things and say the wrong things. And, and you know, the smarter that they are, uh, the older they get, that they, they end up turning that on you. <laughs> So, well, I'll tell you what, he's been very well behaved, very respectful during the interview. So uh, yeah, that's awesome to see. And, and let me ask you about, I know you got the um, Looking for Legends that you launched here too, Looking for New Town. What can you tell me and the listeners about that? Uh, and when is the finale of that going to be uh, coming on? Okay, so look, man, we are very, very excited about this new, incredible, incredible talent search that we're doing. Uh, we partnered up with iHeart, which is so cool. Um, iHeart has been amazing. Uh, and we are looking for legends. Looking for legends is totally different than looking for stars or looking for artists that can perform. We're looking for legends. I mean, people who have when you if you got that it factor, if you also have stage presence, if you know how to perform, if you also can can go in the studio and be able to translate that to the stage in the studio. We're looking for you. Now, I know that seems a little bit complicated because that's like, wow, that's a high bar. But the good thing is we're looking for people who have the ability to do that, right? We're not expecting you to have it all together, but just the people who have the ability, we want to help those people get to the next level. And that's the difference between some of the talent searches you've seen before. Uh, I think sometimes it's so critical uh, for certain artists that we've seen a lot of them on these TV shows that didn't really translate off the shows, right, into mainstream uh, success. Agreed. So we, we just want to try to help uh, fill in the blanks, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, some of that uh, um, artist uh, development that they don't get on those quick, fast shows, we want to be able to help them to do this when we can see the potential. Man, we want to be able to turn some of that into legends, right? And just, you know, and, and have them to be able to walk away with something versus just having the light on them, right? It's really about helping people's lives, you know what I'm saying? And help change their lives and give them something to walk away with so they can be self-sufficient. They don't have to all, they can always look back into this moment and say, hey man, I remember working with Hey Young World and they really gave me a, you know, they gave me more than I think a lot of these artists are getting today. You know, they're, they're getting the opportunity to put their music on platform, they create all their own music, they do damn near everything themselves. And then when it doesn't work, they're in the, they go into depression or they go into these, you know, they go out and, and, and get lost in the world and end up committing crimes and doing, you know, doing, we've seen some crazy stuff you know, over, 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 over this, this period. And then, you know, it's just so much more going on, um, with the pandemic and stuff like that. So we just want to be a little bit more hands-on, um, and give them a lot more uh, support, uh, as well as, um, education on the do's and the don'ts of the game. So, you know, Hey, it's, at the end of the day, it's still going to be their, 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 their <sighs> prerogative, right. In reference to what it is that they want to do with their life. We're not trying to make no one, um, be anything certain or we're not also trying to change anyone we just want to take what they're doing enhance what they're doing give them the the motivation the education the love and support and respect that they deserve 
and uh, help push the thing to the next level for them. Yeah, re- re- really great stuff, Sean. I know you're the guy to get them there. They're in good hands for sure. And you, you rattled off at the top there a lot of these big hits that you've been uh, associated with. What, what's the next one for you? What kind of uh, what could we be looking forward to coming out of uh, Hey Young World? What's the next top 100 hit we could expect here out of Sean Garrett, the pen? Hey, man, so we're working on, we're just finishing up the new Summer Walker album, man, and it's really, really great. It's really incredible. Um, It's been a blast to work with uh, Summer Walker. She's just such a dynamic artist. Um, Man, I would say that the culture really loves her, right? And this is a great moment. I mean, I can kind of look back and say that I remember those pivotal moments that, um, you know, I was working on a project that I felt like, dang, this is going to end up changing the world. And uh, to be very honest, this seems like one of those ones, you know. Um, First single is due to drop very, very soon. The album is done. It's in the can. So it's, you know, it's, 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 and, and I mean, man, if you go to Shade Room or go online, man, I mean, when I tell you the fans are ready for this album, they're going crazy. So uh, this has been really rewarding. Um, And, uh, you know, she ended, she had a, a beautiful baby, um, and I was able to, uh, kind of be in the middle of seeing that whole thing happen and, 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 and doing an album while it's happening, relationships and her story is crazy. So, uh, we're going to see, man, I, I, it's going to be really interesting. Love it. I, I love it. It's, it's going to be crazy. Exciting stuff. Yeah. We can't wait to see myself. And let's last thing I want to hit you with here, Sean, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast. Uh, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Man, for all the new dads or about to be new dads, listen, responsibility of being a father is everything. You are responsible for that child, but it's not so hard. It's not too bad. You just got to understand that this is a mini you and just take on the responsibility of loving that child as much as you possibly can. Right. Um, You know, it's okay if you ain't got it all figured out right now, but just understand the one thing is that God gave you an amazing gift, right? And um, just try to love that child and as much as you possibly can. I mean, it, it, you know, these kids need, they, they, they didn't ask to be here, you know? And so um, don't look at it as a bad thing or a negative thing. Just look at it as a love thing, you know? And, and, and there's nothing wrong with loving your own, right? And, 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 uh, and, you know, dads like us is out here, you know what I mean? If you need any advice, Always hit me up on my DM. I wouldn't be, I would not be opposed to giving any advice to any new dads, man, because I love being a dad. I'm a proud father. Uh, I love my kids so much, and uh, I really enjoy growing with them, you know, and, and, and the one thing you don't want to be caught doing is sleeping on being a great father, because one day they will remind you that you left them, and that ain't an option, so... Yeah, wow. Very well said, man. I love the message. It's been a lot of fun for me. Sean Garrett, the pen, your first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here at First Class Fatherhood. Thank you, man. You're the best, man. I appreciate you, buddy.